Hello, uh, this is part 2 or video number 2 for week 11 so we found that this is how our structure were deformed based on what is drawn in orange so we know that element H will go into compression right so element H is on top will go into compression so we want to find out compression by how much okay so next we're going to find stress x in the h direction is equal to minus m y over i okay. so we found our m so as i say it's in compression so you put minus 66400 the minus means is compression If it's in tension, you plus. So if it's the element is below here, it's in tension, you plus. Okay, so it's minus. Y is from the neutral axis. So where the neutral axis is, or the centroid, I'm going to draw, draw in green. So this is where our centroid is. Okay, so that's our centroid. So centroid to the outer uh, 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 surface. And that is equivalent to our uh, radius. Okay, so so uh, to get the radius is equal to the outer diameter is uh, I think it's one point two five. If I'm not wrong, just check one point two five divided by two. Then the whole thing we divide. Okay, we're going to divide the whole thing by do apologize for this get it done once and for all then the i which is pi over 4 multiply by uh, 1.25 divide by 2 power 4 minus so that's the outer radius internal radius so internal diameter divided by 2 is so radius divided by 4. So this will be equal to minus 4,000. <coughs> Excuse me. Divided by 70.755. Times 10 to the power minus 3. So finally, we got our stress x in the h direction. Sorry. Uh, element h in the x direction stress. So minus fifty six point five three three times ten to the power six psi. So we got that now. Okay. So what does that that mean is we uh view the shaft from the plan view. Okay. So we're gonna view it from the plan view. So this is my transformation. This is my x, this is my y. We're going from the top now. So we know that we have a force coming upwards, which is a dot. This is our 800 pounds. And then we have a force down here going down 800 pounds. And then we have our element here, right? So the element we'll see a compression of 56.533 times 10 to the power of uh, 6 psi okay so that's what we we see so the next thing that we we have that we want to see now is we we'll want to look at the uh, shearing stress okay so we look at the shearing stress so we know our normal stress, there's no more other normal stress in the y direction. So if that's the case, stress y in, in, our, in our case over here will be uh, zero. <coughs> so the shearing, next we're going to look at the shearing stress. So 
So they're sharing stress. <coughs> Excuse me. It's induced. by the talk okay acting on the shaft okay so that's this so talk will be equal to it will be equal to force right, multiplied by the radius of the shaft. That's what torque is. Okay, multiply by the radius of the shaft. So for our case, right, the torque. Will be equal to will be equal to three thousand pound inch. Okay, so again, we view our shaft from the top. So this is our x. This is our y. So we're going to focus on the top. So three, the 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 three uh, thousand. If you look at the question, right, the torque is acting upwards, and the uh, or the thumb is point using right hand rule. The thumb is pointing towards the arrow with the arrow going out, and is going in that direction, as shown using right hand rule. So this is your three thousand. This is your thumb, and your finger will rotate or will cover. From plan view is going in that direction. Okay, so if this is your element, right? And you only can see the torque when you lock one side and lock the other side. So you lock these two sides. Okay. Alright. So this is why I draw this our element. So this is our element H. So what will happen is the deformation will go this way. All right, deformation will go this way. So when it deformed that way, what does it mean? So if we look at a positive shear, so if we look at positive shear. So this is our element. Okay. So in positive shear, the forces are acting in this direction. So what you see now is the element will distort this way. And then you have negative shear. So the negative shear configuration okay the element will start that way okay so this is negative shear configuration okay so what you see down here how the element is started so this is based on negative shear All right I'll do another one. If let's say the torque is acting in a different direction. So this is our torque. Okay, so right hand rule. This is how you see the the, the, the arrow, your fingers will roll. Okay. So if you were to go in the other direction, okay. So I'm gonna copy this. And then now, same transformation, 
nothing changed now the 3000 pounds inch is coming direct so your thumb point that way so your finger will close in this direction using right hand rule so now if we were to draw our element again and now if we lock our element here and this face now the element will distort in the other direction so this is similar to what positive shear so now we can see the effect on the shaft rotation whether it's a positive shear or negative shear now this is most critical if it's solid shaft uh, does not really matter but if it's with carbon fiber it is the most critical okay so the carbon fiber where we design as a shaft is only strongest in rotation in one direction in the reverse direction is no more optimum already okay the the angle that we optimize is no more in the optimum optimized sense because you can see how the torque changes in direction you can see whether it's positive or negative here and then in carbon fiber this is most critical okay so from here we can now do our we can now find the shearing stress magnitude okay we can find the shearing stress magnitude okay so we already know that it is going to be negative shear okay we already know so the shear stress is equal to tr over what over j right where tau is our shearing stress right so this is in PSI or Pascal you know that T correspond to our torque and this is pound inch or Newton meter and R is a maximum radius of the shaft this is in inches or meter and J is the polar moment of area okay. so this is inches to power 4 or meters to power 4 okay so J is equal to twice the second moment of area okay so from here you can immediately calculate your uh, you can calculate your shear stress okay, where tau the torque so you know it's negative right 3000 the negative based on the deformation that you see down here right this is negative then the radius 1.25 divided by 2 and j is a tw twice of i so twice of i which equals 70.755 times 10 to the power minus 3 so now what you see now down here is you get your 
you get your uh, shear which is minus 13.25 times 10 to the power 3 psi okay so now, now you know your uh, shearing stress so we also have found our what we also have found our of course, I want to be sure that I don't get it wrong in our... Okay, I do apologize now here. This is uh, to the power 3. Okay. Not to the power 6. I do apologize. Times 10. To power 3. Okay. Okay. So from here, we can start constructing our element and we also can start doing our mole circle now. So let's con start constructing our element. Okay, so we were to look at our element. H, we're going to view it in this direction from the plan view. So this is X, this Y, and this is our element. So over here, we have uh, 53, 56.533. I'm saying about 3 psi and we know that we have negative shear and this will correspond to 13.25 uh, okay so this is our point so now we can solve it okay you guys must be really good at this now x is our y so we can start drawing, uh, we can start doing our mole circle. So we're going to construct mole circle now. <coughs> so we're going to have So this will be minus 70, minus 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0, 10, normal stress. And then we're going to have our shearing stress, <coughs> excuse me. So be 10, 20, 30, 40, normal uh, shearing stress, clockwise, minus 10, minus 20, 30, okay, minus 40, the opposite direction, and the clockwise rotation of the element. Right, so from here, we can draw our so minus 56 so 55 56 should be around here I'm just going to eyeball this okay it's close enough so this is our stress X then we have our stress Y then shear 13.25 so again I'm going to eyeball this 13.25 so this is uh, 15 yeah 13.25 should be somewhere around here Thirteen point two five. 
to be somewhere around here right now for carbon fiber this is very important you got it wrong your carbon fiber is absolutely useless and in the wrong direction <coughs> so x the element will be rotate, rotating okay at point x is minus 56 and you'll be rotating so you put your finger down here you'll be rotating in a clockwise direction so this is your point x all right and then this is your point y if you later on i show you if you got it wrong in the opposite direction we are wasting once another time then you draw a straight line across okay so from here you immediately can calculate your center of your circle okay, immediately you can calculate uh center of your circle So center of circle is your stress average. So your stress average will be equal to stress X plus stress Y divided by 2. So it will be 0 minus plus by minus minus 55 point is it 533? 56.533. I'm sent to power 3 and then the whole thing divided by 2 so this will become minus so 56 this is minus 28 point uh, 267 I'm sent to power 3 psi then from here you can calculate Again, like uh, know where your stress average is. And then, if you have your compass, you can immediately draw your draw your uh, circle. Okay. So for your final exam, when you do it at home, don't forget your compass. It will help you a lot. So over here. This will be equal to uh, minus 28.267. So this is your stress average. Okay. So now you can, in fact, uh, draw your circle. So you draw your, hold on, you can draw your circle. So I'm going to I'm going to try to sketch more circle. Okay. So we're going to try to sketch. So this is how our mole circle should look like. To say it's easier if you have a compass. Okay. I'm just eyeballing this as as usual. I know I should not eyeball, but anyway. Okay, this is close enough. I'm not going to mess around anymore, okay? So now what we want to find, right, is we want to find what will happen how to get to stress 1 and how to get to stress 2 okay so you want to get to stress 1 so stress 1 points okay stress 1 point stress 1 and stress 2 are known as you guys know this by now principal stresses where the shear stress is equal to zero okay so i'm going to stop here i'll come back for i will come back again on video number three thank you